Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the third episode of Refining Character where we look to take benefits uh, from the character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the third episode and today inshallah I'm joined by Sheikh Asim Khan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today what are we going to be talking about? Um, so today I thought we'd talk about the topic of backbiting um, simply because it's so prevalent um, a lot of people fall into it without realizing mm -hmm. and even in our homes mm -hmm. sometimes we hear our family members maybe backbiting or at work we have people backbiting and you know that's a problem like how do you deal with that so I thought today let's try to delve into that okay okay no it's an amazing topic and it's uh, something that we really really need to protect ourselves from I think um, with backbiting, it's something which it's an environment that you surround yourselves with. I mean, so you're not going to just start backbiting when you're by yourself, mm -hmm. but it's the people that you surround yourself with. So is there certain situations you feel you're more common or it's more likely that you will start to backbite? So, for example, I mean, non-Muslims, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we live uh, in the West and uh, many of our work colleagues, neighbours are non-Muslims. and. Even though every sensible person knows that they shouldn't really be talking about somebody else behind their back, because it's so pervasive, mm -hmm. <clears throat> many times you find yourself being part of a conversation mm -hmm. where somebody else is being spoken about. And as a Muslim, you know, you're, you're thinking, actually, right now that person is backbiting. Mm -hmm. I'm standing in the presence of that person. Should I be saying something? Should I be saying, actually, you know what, maybe we shouldn't talk about them behind their back. And then obviously it's the perception that you're you're thinking, oh, what, what are people going to think about me? I'm always the person saying that we shouldn't talk about people behind their back, we shouldn't be talking about this, we shouldn't be talking about that. So I think as a Muslim, especially in, in non-Muslim uh, society, we have to be very, very mindful, and we need some kind of guidance on how to deal with those scenarios. Okay, inshallah. And you just mentioned about, obviously, backbiting and how it's talking about someone behind their back. Now, what's the difference between that and criticism, for example? Is there, is there I think there's a, quite a fine line, is that not right? There is, but I think, generally speaking, a person should be very careful about speaking about somebody else in a manner that they wouldn't appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, um, there, in the hadith of the Prophet, he defined backbiting for us, and he said, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا لَمْ that it's when a person speaks about another in a, in a way that they wouldn't like or they wouldn't appreciate. And then when he said that, a companion said, well, what if it's true? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, then the Prophet the Prophet said, in, then it's backbiting. And if it wasn't true, then it'll be slander. Now, the, the thing is, what is the difference between them, slandering and backbiting? In terms of sin, there's no difference because both of them are major sins. Mm -hmm. So if he said, that person's fat, that person's so tall, or that person's too short, or that person's four eyed, or whatever. You might think of it as like a trivial statement, but even if it's true, it's backbiting, which is a major sin. And if it's not true, it's slandering, which is a major sin. So from, from that perspective, a Muslim should always be very cautious about talking about somebody else. And in fact, you know, in conversation, this is the lowest form of conversation as well. When you, talk, when you talk about other people. And then one level up from that, which is still not great, is when you talk about yourself, like when you're bragging. And then the best form of conversation is when you talk about ideas, or you talk about values, or you talk about Allah, or you talk about you know, things that are higher. And if you operate on that level, inshallah, you won't fall into these kind of issues of backbiting. But I find that many times people, they don't think about what they want to talk about, and so they end up going into the lowest form of conversation, which is, oh, look what she's wearing today. You know? and some people for small talk they that's the first thing they result to yeah because you know they can get a lot out of another person from i mean that. british people are quite good with small talk because they go straight to the weather isn't it yeah. the weather today, man. <laughs> but even in that there's a little bit of a problem yeah. because you're kind of complaining yeah, yeah. and a muslim shouldn't you shouldn't never start a conversation off by complaining oh, um but i mean that's that's not that big a deal as compared to oh you know look what she's wearing today or you know he's always late man he's late today again you know those kind of things those are dangerous because what it is is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every single person a sense of dignity and honor. Allah says in the Quran, bani Adam. We honor the children of Adam. And that's a God given sense of dignity that you've been given, I've been given. To backbite someone is to try to take away some of that. And in a way, you've infringed not on just their 
being but on something that Allah has given. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of infringing on something that Allah has put in place. Mm -hmm. So Allah has put in place this much, this person should have this much dignity and when you backbite them you undermine that. And so what you've done is you have done something which uh, compromises your relationship with Allah. Mm -hmm. And that's a good perspective to have on backbiting. Like, you know, even a non-Muslim, Allah has given them a, a level of dignity. And that's why some of the scholars, they say that backbiting, even though the hadith says speaking about your brother in a manner that he wouldn't like, does still include non-Muslims. Uh, because of the fact that they, the person wouldn't backbite non-Muslims. And secondly, even a non-Muslim has a sense of dignity that Allah has given them that she shouldn't be, you know, um, undermining. Okay, and Jazakallah khair for that. And so just in certain places, it's more common to backbite, like you said, when you're surrounded by more non-Muslims, for example, at work. So, yeah. hey, how do we avoid it, you know, without being a buzzkill or something like that? What, yeah. what, what can we do? I mean, like, for example, if you're in, sitting in the canteen having your lunch and you're, you know, sitting with John or whoever and Sally and they're talking about, Simon is always late, you know, do you see him today, he was late again. But what if he is always late? Well, that's what we just said. If it's, if it's true, then it's backbiting. Oh, yes, I <laughs> It's not true, then it's slandering, right? So they've just basically indulged in some kind of backbiting because most probably Simon doesn't want other people to say he's always late. Of course, right? yeah, Most yeah. people wouldn't want you to say mm -hmm. that. They wouldn't appreciate that. So what do you do now as a Muslim? I think the first thing is to realise that as a Muslim, you should be proactive in taking the conversation to a good place. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down, you're about to eat your food and everyone's about to start talking, you start the conversation off, mm -hmm. you know, and instead of talking about somebody else, you talk about something good, like, you know, today when I woke up, um, you know, I, I realized, oh, sorry, when I was coming to work today, I saw someone who was, you know, um, so sick that even though last week I saw them walking, today I saw them on a wheelchair and I thought to myself, look how quickly you know, our situations can change. Yeah. And it's, uh, health is such a big blessing. And then I just, inshallah, will start a good conversation off. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, you would get the reward, inshallah, of people maybe re being uh, reminded of Allah or themselves remembering Allah. Mm -hmm. But if you're passive, and you're just sitting there and you're just, you know, arming and ahhing and just joining in the conversation, then most probably somebody's going to say something which is un-Islamic. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to be in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if you are, Say somebody does say that comment about, oh, you know, he's always late, look, he's late today again. What should you do? You should be brave enough to say, you know what, I don't think we should talk about Simon behind his back. I don't yeah. think the guy would appreciate that. So, um, you know, but you know what? I'll tell you one thing he's really good at. He never misses a deadline. Have you noticed that? So you kind of, in a way, you've taken away something from him. So you should make up something now. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's one of the ways the scholars, they say, if you have, you know, indulged in backbiting, then what should you do? And I think that's an important question as well to get some clarity on like, if you've been guilty of it, and I'm, I'm sure most of us at some point have done that, right? So some of the scholars say, well, you should go up to that person and say, you know what? I said a few things, they weren't great about you and please forgive me. Mm -hmm. If that person you feel is going to react badly, they'll be like, what, what did you say? Tell me exactly when you said it. Who did you say it to? And then you're going to get even more, yeah, you're going to get even more trouble. Yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, it's true what I said about you. <laughs> See, this is the way you're reacting right now. So what you should do is you should, number one, make dua for them. Yeah. And number two, in the same gathering that you spoke badly of them, you should speak good about them. Right? So you should try to find the opportunity that you're around those same two or three people and say, you know what, <clears throat> let me tell you something about that guy. Something good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And inshallah, in that way, you've kind of, you've taken away something before, but now you've kind of restored it and maybe add some as well. So, you know, you, you, you make up inshallah on the day of judgment, you don't have to answer for that. Okay, Jazakallah khair for that, Sheikh. And um, something which another place maybe we com commonly start to backbite is, for example, um, you know, the sisters probably tuned into Iman channel because they got fed up of football, but now we're going to bring it back to football. Um, was, for example, just, you know, brothers on the, a WhatsApp group chat or, or something like that, you know, they're talking about football and all of a sudden we delve into someone's private life. Um, you know, that's still, even though they're famous, that's still backbiting, is that not? I mean, yeah, if you're... <sighs> I mean, like I said, if you're insulting someone, mm -hmm. you're basically saying something about them that's not true, then that is considered slander, mm -hmm. and that's something a Muslim should never do. Uh, but if it is true, then we, we make a distinction between you know, professionally criticizing them, mm -hmm. like about their performance in the match, versus taking it to a personal matter, mm -hmm. you know, about their family or their personal life. So you can be a critic, that's not a problem, mm -hmm. because the person themselves, 
they have done something publicly mm -hmm. and in a way they provide a service or done something which then can make them liable for criticism and there's no blame on you if you're fair in your criticism for making criticism but I think what you're talking to is like you know in WhatsApp mm -hmm. groups you know people would start um, you know cussing the other team and then cussing the players and then talking about them in a way that's which is not good at all mm -hmm. uh, that is something that again Muslims should avoid as a general rule you know I feel like a lot of these problems they come because of people that don't really have anything good to say mm -hmm. but they just want to fill the the space mm -hmm. and just want to say something for the sake of saying something and that's when you end up in problems yeah, yeah, yeah. so the, the Prophet said he said Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir falyakul khayran awul yasmud that if whoever believes in the hereafter that Allah in the hereafter then let him say something good otherwise remain silent mm -hmm. and that's a brilliant rule to follow in your life like if, you're, if your mind has just gone blank you don't know what to say just don't say anything at all. There's no need to just blurt something out yeah. because most probably you'll say something which you, you will you'll regret. regret. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a, a moment of patience in a moment of uh, anger. Exactly. Saves a yeah. thousand moments of regret, for example. 100%. So, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think it's uh, something which is something very, very important. We don't realize how, much, how big a sin it is, right? Because uh, backbiting is one of the major sins, as you mentioned. Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. Jazakallah khair Sheikh, thank you so much for that and uh, that brings us to a close of another episode on Refining Character SubhanAllah it's gone by so quick but please join us again next time on Refining Character Jazakallah khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh